Hello everyone, welcome to this step-by-step -step guide on OpenCBI. If you are new to OpenCBI, don't worry, this video is designed for beginners and I will walk you through everything you need to know to get started. In this video, we'll cover installing OpenCBI from Operator Hub, setting up essential components, configuring basic resources for a working AI environment. The first step is to install the OpenCBI operator. Operator in OpenCBI are like smart assistants that manage complex applications for you. You have to navigate to OpenCIP web consoles, log into your OpenCIP clusters, and then this operator hub. And here, search for OpenCIP AI, Red Hat OpenCIP AI. Let me click on this and install. Go with this default configuration for now. So we're going to use a stable channel. There are multiple channels. And then 2.16.1 is the like latest version at the time of this recording. We're going to use or make this operator available in all namespaces on the cluster. And this is the recommended namespace Red Hat ODS operator. So it's going to create that one as well. It does not exist already. And then I'm going to say update approval automatic. You can also select manual if you want to do that. For now, let's go with the automatic version. All right, so let's click on install. Once installed, you will see OpenCP AI in the install operator section. Operator installation is complete. Now we have to create the data science cluster for that. Before you do that, let's go here in the install operator tab. And this is the operator we just installed. Click on that. And it was asking us to create this data science cluster resources. There is nothing created at the moment. It's saying mesh control plane creation is failing. ODS application mesh control is failing there. So we'll fix that later. And this is our DC initialization. So it's complaining about its service mesh is not installed, which is OK. We can always install that and then fix this error. For now, I just want to show the basic installations. Let's start with the data science class creation. We'll go with the default installation. If you select form view, these are the default installation. If you want to see the YAML view, then you can customize all the components which you want to install as a part of this installation process as well. So for example, we can install Ray, which is already managed. This means it's going to install that one as well. It requires extra operator, but this will at least enable that. And once we install the operator, it will reconcile that, and then it will be available as a part of Red Hat OpenCBI dashboard as well. Now it's progressing. You can see that progress from events tab as well. Now we can actually navigate to this project of Red Hat ODS application. If we go there, this is where it's installing the components. You can see now the components are up and running. If you go back to that old project again, navigate to install operators, navigate to this, you can see this is already succeeded. Now once this installation is complete, you will see a link activated to this navigation menu. Simply click on Red Hat OpenCIP AI, log in with OpenCIP, and then you have to fill out your default authentication mechanism. So I'm using admin and the password for now. You can also hook up with your LDAP, basic authentication, SD password, and those. For now, let me log in with this basic authentication. Now this is what the landing dashboard looks like for Red Hat OpenCBI. This is the very basic settings we have enabled with the default configurations. One thing you have to make sure is data science cluster require stories. For me, the storage is already installed and configured. The storage class is configured for that one. So default is GP3-CSI, and there is another storage class, GP2-CSI. Everything is running on EBS. If you are running on data center, then you can install ODF. There is a LVM operator as well. If you are playing with single node clusters, you can also use that. Or if you have your preferred storage solution, OpenCIP support that one as well, as long as it's following the Kubernetes standard, CSI framework and those. Storage is mandatory, otherwise it will not work. So this one needs to be configured first as well. All right, let's navigate to Red Hat OpenCIP AI. And this is what the dashboard looks like. This dashboard has multiple sections. So here you are seeing data science projects. Data science project is nothing but a namespaces in terms of OpenCIP or Kubernetes, where you can create the project and then you can logically group all the workbenches, users, and those to grant access to that particular projects. So that's how Red Hat OpenCIP AI data science project looks like. If you want to understand more on Red Hat OpenCIP AI and integrate different third-party add-ons and those, you can also do that from this. Menu. There are notebook images, serving so runtime, cluster settings, and those. You can click on that sections to navigate to that particular sections as well. 
I want to do one more thing before we conclude these sections. So here, there are two different ways you can create the Jupyter Notebooks or workbenches in terms of React OpenCBI. That's what we call a workbenches. You can also launch application from here. If you want to create one workbenches, this is the best way you can launch single workbenches. And there are multiple default images available as part of this workbench. You can select notebook images like minimal Python. There is a standard data science image as well. We have CUDA versions, there is PyTors, PyTensorflow, and those. And then you can also import your custom images as well if you want to do that. You can also select the container size. These are the like default available. You can also customize these values based on your need. And then you can also add environment variables. Let's say your notebooks project requires certain environment var variables injected as a part of launching process. Then you can also add that here. So you can say database password or something like that here, and then supply that in environment variable as a part of this. And you can also create the secrets and those if you want to do that. So this is one way you can create the servers. So for example, let me click on this. I selected the code server, which is going to launch VS Code. This actually created the PVC, and this is one of the reasons I mentioned storage is mandatory. Without this, it will not able to launch the workbenches. You can see the progress here. Also expand the event logs and to see what's going on here. So it's Basically, it requested successfully assigned the IP address of nodes, attached the volume. So this is a PVC created for this. You can also see that from our PVC section if you want to do that. So this is the PVC just created for that. It's pulling the image. This is a network assigned to that from the OBN Kubernetes. This is now 70%, 80%, 96%. And then you can see more progress going to that. Created it with proxy and container for that one as well. All right, so this is now up and running. What you can do is you can open a new tab or current tab. So I'm gonna open a new tab, the workbenches, and then use the same username and password which you use to authenticate your open set. I'll say allow selected permission. And this is what the VS Code looks like, which is running on Red OpenCVI. So from here, you can do the developments clone your repository and those. This is one way you can launch the workbenches. Another way you can do is, I'm gonna stop this notebook server for now. This is another handy features. Another way you can do is you can go to data science project, click on that, create a project, which is essentially going to create a name space inside the cluster. So I'll call it NetSentinel, click on that. And then you can provide the description here, network intrusion detection demo and then click on create. Now this is a namespace. Namespace, this means you can navigate to that from here as well, okay? So there is nothing associated. You can also get namespace or get projects to visualize that more. Now here you can add the permissions, assign the users, assign the groups, create the data connections, create the cluster stories, deploy the models and create the workbenches. And then this is a quick overview of that one as well. So let me create a workbenches within this namespace. Click on create workbenches. So it's the same form you saw before, a little bit different, but it has similar features. So I'm going to call it Net Sentinel demo. And then here you can provide the descriptions. So for now I'll leave it blank. And notebook images, you can start with any of these. It's the same list available in previous as well from these applications. So I'm going to select minimal Python or standard data science. Let me select minimal Python for now. And there are version selection for that particular image. So it looks like we have two versions available, 2024.2 and 2024.1, which is Python version 3.9 and Python version 3.11. You can have your own custom image, which you can import from this cluster settings section. I'll show you that in upcoming videos. For now, let's go with 2024.2, which is recommended. This is a container site. Again, this is a similar section we saw in previous menu as well. So I'm going to use medium this time, which is a six CPU, 24 gigabyte of memory. Okay, that's the limit. And then request is three CPU, 24 gigabyte of memory. You can actually add more from different configuration file. And it's again, the concept here is similar in moment variables. If you wanna create the config map or seekers, you have both options. So let me create the config map and you can set key value or you can also upload the config map. For now, let me add it from here, database, Password, this is cool with the spaces on those, it doesn't matter. 
And then this is where you can create the new persistent stories using your stories classes. Or you can also use the existing one if there is any available in this project. So this is a fresh project, there is no stories available. So I'm going to create a new persistent stories. I'll use the same default name, Net Sentinel DevOps, so it's easy to identify. And then here you can increase the size or decrease the size as well. 20 gigabyte or 40 gigabyte. You can also select the megabyte as well if you want to do that. I will use 40 gigabyte for this. And then here, this is a connection you have to create if you want to integrate with the S3. If your data source is available in S3 or if you want to upload the model in S3, you can use this. Any S3 compatible object storage is fine. You can use Minio, OpenSIP Data Foundation, Nuba, or AWS S3 bucket, Google S3 bucket, and those kind of stuff as well. So anything is supported. And you can also use this URL if you want to use that as a data connection. I will use this as a blank for now, and let's create the workbenches. It's going to take some time. The process is the same. If you want to stop, you can do that, or you can see the starting, and then click on event log, and similar log you can see from here as well, 40% complete. And what it is doing, it's uh, assigning this node, creating a PVC. Now I think we have two different PVCs. So this one is created for before, and this is the one we just created in a Sentinel demo. And then it attached the volume, added the part network, pulling the images from our internal registry. So first it cloned that image to internal registry. And then from here, this is another old proxy, and this is up and running now. All right, so this is running. You can see the status and click on this, and you can see this way you can launch the Jupyter Notebooks pretty quickly. So before we launch VS Code, it based on the images, and this time we launch Jupyter Notebooks using our project. So for example, if you want to create the notebooks, you can simply click on this, and hello, let's see if we can run this or not. And you can see this is running now. This is untitled IPY and B. If you want to save, demo, notebook, then this is available here. Now you can initialize Git. I will cover that in the next section. For now, this is how you can create the note, Jupyter Notebooks easily. Now let's go back to this UI again. So here in overview section, you can see this is one running and this is the only one workbench available. You can keep creating more workbenches within these namespaces. For now, we just created one workbench. The model summing is not enabled and I'll show you how to do this in upcoming video as well. So there is a features and it requires another components to, inst to be installed first, serverless or service mesh so that it will be activated. So I'll show you that in upcoming videos. This is a cluster storage we just created as a part of the workbenches, which has 40 gigabyte. You can add cluster storage like this one. If you want to say demo two, you can create our head and then assign or attach this one to that existing workbenches, or you can add more to existing workbenches as well. The way it works is it will reboot these workbenches, I think. Let's see if this is available here. Okay, yeah, it's already starting this. One thing you can do is you can also open the terminal from this Jupyter Notebooks. Click on that, navigate to that models. Okay, so I'm inside that one now. And this is where it attached that extra 20 gigabyte. So this is how you can keep adding more and more stories as well from this menu. A connection is same, data connection, we haven't created that one. Permission is if you want to add more users, you can do that. We'll explore this in upcoming videos. You can also create the groups and assign that groups to this. Let's conclude this video for now. If you have any questions, do not hesitate to comment in the comment box and I'll try to answer in upcoming videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel as well. See you on next.